Hello, it's me, and I'm here with my coffee in my First Ladies mug. I am doing an introduction to the First Ladies video series that I'm going to do about First Ladies and the needlework of their time. So this video will be somewhat short, but I'm going to give you some information on how this came about, what I'm planning on doing, what my thoughts are, why I enjoy doing this, and what we're going to be doing together. Um, I always have my coffee with me. It's like, it's like my life juice. <laughs> and I'm going to use my first lady's mug. I'm going to get a lot of use out of this mug. It's no longer something that you can purchase, but I've had it for quite a few years. So you'll see me using my first lady's mug during this series. Okay. So if you're watching this and you don't watch my floss tube, which is a YouTube video channel about cross-stitching and needlework, as well as a little bit about my business, Needle and Flax, and I do hand-dyed linens. Um, I am Rachel, and I own Needle and Flax, and, uh, you know, I share my needlework usually on Flosstube or YouTube. Um, this is going to be a separate series, um, sort of a history series on the First Ladies of the United States and needlework of their time. There's a lot of first ladies to cover. So this will be a very long ongoing series. So I thought I would tell you first why, how this came about. Um, about a year ago, I did a live video um, on YouTube and it still should be in my playlist. It's in there somewhere. Um, and I did a live video and we called it Stitching in Our House Coats for a whole different set of reasons. But a bunch of us bought house coats and dusters and things and decided to wear them while stitching and get together and just do a little chat. So during that live video, I brought some things with me to show that I had re recently purchased. And I have a linen that I named Dolly Madison. And she is one of my favorite first ladies. And in that video, I had purchased a Dolly Madison tote bag that I was super pumped about. And I showed the tote bag and everybody loved it. In fact, that night I was getting um, texts and messages that people were going to buy it and they had sold out <laughs> because everybody wanted this tote bag. So I'm gushing over this tote bag, which on a side note, I'm trying to get some of those to put into my website because they are just fantastic. And I will show it during um, my Dolly Madison video. So if you are still looking for one of those, hold off a bit because I'm going to see if I can get some. Anyway, I was showing the tote bag and talking about Dolly Madison. And I don't know if a question spurred it on, but I basically blurted out, you guys want to hear about Dolly Madison? <laughs> so I kind of went into this, why I thought she was cool and how I don't feel she's talked enough about and all these little tidbits that I knew, which I think people were, well, they were enjoying it because I got a lot of messages about it. And somebody had also said, do you know if Dolly Madison did any needlework? And I said, I have no clue. But based on the time period she lived in, she probably did. So I was like, I'm going to look into this. Well, after that live video, I got, I can't even tell you how many emails and messages I got with people saying, thank you. I love the way you delivered it. I've never really loved history, but just the way you talked about her as a regular person and some of these fun little tidbits about her personality, it made me, hold on a minute. All right. Sorry about that. Now, if you also watch my videos, you know, I get a lot of interruptions. I get dogs barking, packages delivered all kinds of stuff and I don't edit. So it just is what it is. So I have no idea what I was talking about other than, so after that video, I got a ton of messages and people were really interested and wanted to look a little bit more into Dolly Madison and just thought I did a great job. I personally felt like I did not do her justice because I knew so much more, but just sort of doing it off the cuff like that, I felt like there was so much more I could say. You know, it's like when you get out, done with a conversation, you go, oh, I should have brought up this point. I should have said this. I should have said that. I kind of obsessed with it a little bit. Within 24 hours, 
I had the bright idea, wouldn't it be fun to do actual videos, independent videos of all these different first ladies and sort of talk about their history and see, talk about the needlework at that time, even if we don't have examples of that particular first lady doing needlework. Many of them most certainly did, especially those first, those earlier first ladies um, when needlework was kind of a nece necessity and necessary skill to learn as a woman. Um, some of them we do have examples of needlework that they did. And the needlework ranges from quilting and sewing and making samplers and um, embroidery. There were needle pointers, there were crocheters, knitters, it just runs the gamut. So it'll be a lot of different types of needlework as well. Um, these early ones, we're gonna focus a lot more on samplers and it'll kind of evolve from there and some quilting. There's some examples of some quilting and lace making and all different sorts of fun stuff. So anyway, I decided within 24 hours, I'm going to do this series because as a history nerd, it'll be fun for me to dig into some of the first ladies that I'm not well versed in. Um, just like anybody that likes reading history, you sort of, or at least I do, focus in on certain places, time periods, people, and you sort of do deep dives into those and don't always sort of, you know look at every little bit and piece. And so I love presidential history. I love American history. And I love a lot of the first ladies, but there was quite a few I didn't know about or didn't know enough about, I should say. Um, so that's what I've been doing for the last year. One of the good things about my job is that I'm dyeing linen and ironing linen. Um, I can't do it when I'm doing like book work and computer work, but um, I have a lot of time to watch things on TV, documentaries, YouTube videos. Um, I have watched a lot of lectures at universities, <laughs> um, in the last year. I can listen to podcasts. I can listen to books on tape, although the books on tape, you know, in the first lady realm, it's not my favorite thing to do. Um, I have purchased a bazillion and one books on first ladies and I have quite the collection now and I'm going to show some of those during my videos. Um, so eventually I announced that I would do this video and I have had a lot of comments and things which I will talk about um, as we progress in this introduction video. Okay, so why do I like the first ladies or what got me into this? Um, first of all, I love American history. I like history in general. There are certain, like I said, certain time periods, certain events that I really am drawn to. Um, I've always liked reading about the American Revolution, the Civil War, the colonies, the founding of this country. I've loved studying the monarchy in Great Britain, you know, American history is what I'm most versed at. And our history is very short, so it's not too hard to go back to the beginning and really do deep dives into this stuff. Um, I love looking at history. And one of the ways that I had talked about Dolly is I love looking at these people as people. I love when you can find, I mean, they were people. When you can find the sort of human elements that you can really relate to today in 2023, even though the world they lived in was very different than our world. So it's sort of, it's sort of twofold, right? Because they did live in a completely different world and they didn't always have the mindset that we have, but we still have these like common threads. Um, I wouldn't say in particular, I'm a big women's history studier, but I do, you know, as a woman, we can relate to other women, right? They carried out the same types of roles that we do nowadays. And so there's a relatability aspect to women's history and ladies. Um, I've always said that when you study these people that are well-researched and documented, like a first lady, they're an example of somebody that's in every single human's family tree, 
if you do genealogy, you may or may not have famous people in your lines. A lot of people do. At some point, you have somebody that was important in their town, important in their church. Somebody at the time that was very well documented because of what they were doing. And these first ladies are examples of people that are in all of our family trees, regardless of where you live or where you're from. They're not completely unique. The only difference is that they've done something that people really at the time felt like it could be documented. Um, if you do a family tree, you may not be able to go very, very far back in your tree in different lines. You may not know anything at all and not even have a family tree, but it doesn't mean it's not there. Women like these first ladies, you know, everyday people that didn't do anything amazing and people that did do amazing things, they are all in our family trees, regardless of who you are or where you came from. So it is fun to study the people that we do have information about because you may not be related to Martha Washington, but there is a Martha Washington in your family tree, no doubt. There is in everybody's. So I find that interesting. I like studying history. I feel like a lot of misconceptions are really blown out of the water and it makes you think when you really do a deep dive into history, sometimes certain things will get me going. And just for an example, uh, this is going to be kind of a rambling video. <laughs> but for example, I remember watching the TV show Mad Men. I loved Mad Men. And it was very much, if you didn't watch it, it was very much a caricature of men and women and society's rules in the 50s, 60s, and I think that show even went into the early 70s. I can't remember the time period. Most of it was in the late 50s going in through the 60s. It covered a long time period. But it was very much a caricature of, you know, it was in an ad agency and the men were sexist pigs and always drinking and cheating on their wives and smoking like chimneys. The women were, you know, there were different women. There were women that were sort of subservient and kind of didn't have a brain. There were women that could only get their way with their bodies. And then there was the couple of budding feminists that really were resentful of this society that they lived in. And I love that show. In fact, I have watched, binge watched that show a few times since it went off the air. I love the clothes, the style. I just love, I love it. But I remember watching it and thinking, I knew a lot of women, you know, these are our mothers and grandmothers that were adults functioning in the world, in the workplace, in the home place, taking care of their children. And they weren't these caricatures. The people that I knew certainly were not. Now, you may know a few caricatures of women that were sort of timid housewives that were very dependent on their husbands, women who were ultra feminist and really were trying to break that glass ceiling. You may find, you know, the only women you knew, you didn't know many women that worked or men that were sexist pigs. But I kind of felt like these were not really the women in reality that I knew from that time frame were not like that. A lot of them were career women and did well. Some of them were stay-at-home mothers, but they weren't, well, a lot of them were stay-at-home mothers, but they weren't resentful of it. They weren't under their husband's thumb. They were very strong people. Many of these families, who of course were older when I was a kid, but the women were wearing the pants in the family. And I just felt like that show was a caricature and when you know a lot of these people, they don't all fall under that, that line of thinking, right? Now, it's not to say that some of that caricature wasn't true. It absolutely was. But I remember that show getting me really thinking, like, why, why do we accept that that was the norm? When it wasn't totally the norm, it wasn't that it didn't happen, but it wasn't everybody. And there are exceptions to that. And I think with women's history, you'll see that. And I think you'll see that with these first ladies. Hold on a minute. Another interruption. So anyway, I love looking into things and seeing where some of these basically blanket statements or ideas on people and how they lived and what they did 
aren't always the case and that there are exceptions and maybe they aren't even exceptions, but that it wasn't completely one way or another. Um, when you talk about women during some of these periods really not having a voice, there were prohibitive laws, absolutely. There were laws that were not friendly to women, but you'll see in this First Lady series, a lot of these ladies were badasses and their husbands did look at them as equals and they were very powerful and influential. Not all, but some. And they're just not the mold when somebody says women really couldn't do anything. I think that's too blanket of a statement because they had some really important roles. And I think you're going to really be interested in some of these ladies and how how they functioned with these husbands and the dynamics of the world they lived in. They were restricted. They didn't vote. Many of them. We're going to go through some of the more modern ones. So obviously that changes. But um, I don't know. I guess it bothers me sometimes when we think that women were helpless and sort of held down because even with some of the restrictions, there were many women. And like I said, they're in your family tree too. They didn't accept that and didn't live that way and really were strong, capable, not meek, timid, put upon women. Um, so I find that interesting. Um, sometimes you hear things like, you know, one of the types of samplers that people look at is mourning samplers, where you would stitch something in remembrance of somebody that you love and lost. And that is a whole nother subject. But a lot of these ladies during the early time suffered great tragedy and lost children many times. And a lot of times when you look at history, um, when... People talk about samplers and the history of a girl, maybe in particular, that did a sampler. The sentence, losing children was common at that time, gets thrown around a lot. And that's another one where I'm like, God, that really bothers me. Because I feel like if you're a mother, or if you are, everybody's the child of a mother, just because it was common doesn't mean it wasn't tragic and something incredibly hard for these people to move through and beyond. And that was another part of this that was kind of interesting to me. You will see when we go through these first ladies, many of them have had immense tragedies and the way that they push through it. Yes, child death was incredibly common, but I feel like if you live during that time, it doesn't mean the bond wasn't there, that the loss wasn't the same as it would be in 2023, even though you were probably much more aware of the fact that it happened in many families around you. The chances that it may happen to your family were high, but it doesn't mean that that, that parent, that mother didn't dread that and didn't get affected by it. And you're going to see some of these stories in the first lady. So it's things like that, that sometimes you will see when you're watching historical presentations, when you are watching people talk about the history of things. We as stitchers that do samplers, we look at a lot of history of women and stitching and what was going on at the time that any particular sampler was stitched. And, um, you know, sometimes it just makes me think and it makes you want to delve deeper. And so the First Ladies is a way to look at American women. Granted, many of these women were from privileged backgrounds. And when I say privileged, it's not privileged of today. They led very hard lives. Um, but they're just sort of a representation of American life in a way. Um, we don't have a monarchy. And so in a way, our presidents marking, you know, the structuring of the United States of America and the founding of our country and where it has been from the beginning to today, you know, the presidents have sort of become, you know, in a way they always say Americans, it's Hollywood celebrities and you know, our government people, because we don't have a monarchy. And so those are kind of, you know, if I were doing Great Britain, I would probably follow the monarchy to tell the story of what was going on 
in those countries and that region and tell it through the story of the monarchy and how the country changed in America. It's from the founding um, and through the presidents. And I don't know, to me, it's interesting. And like I said, it's a short history, so it's not terribly hard to get real deep in the weeds and learn a lot about it. So what are you going to learn from the first ladies? Well, I'm going to go through the early ones we can definitely trace to a lot of samplers. And since I'm a sampler lover, I'll dip a little bit into samplers and probably a lot from the regions that these ladies came from. Martha Washington was from Virginia. Abigail Adams was from Massachusetts. You know, I will try to talk a little bit about that and maybe samplers from the state that they are from. Of course, as you go forward in time, um, needlework became not a necessity, so it was much more of a pastime. And so, you know, you're more modern first ladies. Um, there's a lot of knitters and crocheters. Uh, I will probably end it with Barbara Bush. Um, she was a prolific needle pointer and needle worker. And obviously that for her was a hobby in her lifetime. That wasn't necessarily a necessity to get by in life. Um, when I first announced the first ladies, I said, I'm only doing dead ones. And I got a lot of chuckles out of that. Uh, this is not like a political show. This is totally historical history. I'm not a total expert. I, you know, have delved deep into this, but I feel like if they've passed, if the first lady has passed away, their story is written and tied up. And all of the living first ladies, which there's a nice little handful of them now, the oldest being Rosalind Carter. I'm not sure she's doing much anymore. She's in her 90s. But their stories their stories haven't ended. And so it's hard to look at those lives with a perspective of history and to see what, you know, they still may have contributions. Their time in the White House is not the only part of their lives that's meaningful. So when I go through my first ladies, through Barbara Bush, we're going to go over it over a long course of time. But you might learn some interesting things. Um, I have learned quite a bit. Um, we will start with Martha Washington and I will upload that video this week. I don't know. There's just a lot of things, like I said, you there's these not misconceptions, but sort of commonly stated blanket statements that a lot of times people have. And the first ladies have not been studied um, really in depth because they weren't elected. It wasn't really a slight to women necessarily that people didn't want to know about them, but it was their husbands that were put in charge and they were brought along for the ride. They weren't. And even today, the first lady is not elected I think, um, you know, they can take criticism and you'll see some of these historical ones also took criticism in the press and from their husband's political opponents and things. And that's been that way for quite a bit. But in general, the first lady, they're not elected. They didn't ask for it. Um, they have a complimentary job to the president. But some interesting things you might learn. Some of these couples were power couples and very much equals. The husbands heavily depended on their wife for advice politically. Many of these early women, um, including Martha and Abigail, the first two, they did follow politics. They did read about it. They were in tune with that. Um, the role of the first lady, you know, they call Dolly Madison the first first lady. And I think... There's a little question as to when the term first lady was first used, and it's not particularly clear, but a lot of people say it was with Dolly that they started calling her the first lady. For example, with Martha Washington, she was typically called Lady Washington. Um, Dolly Madison, and we'll go into her in her video, um, she sort of started a lot of the traditions that since then many first ladies have followed the footstep of taking charge of different parts of, I don't know, entertainment, different things in the White House that the First Ladies even today still still do. Um, before that, we were just trying to figure things out. Some of the ladies before Dolly Madison certainly did some of the same things, but 
like I said, we aren't a monarchy. There was no tradition to follow. And we were very much trying to, as a new country, formerly a British colony, trying to buck against what the British did. So some things we borrowed from them and did a little bit like they did. And some things we purposely did very differently after the American Revolution. So you're going to find all different sorts of things. You will find some ladies that really wanted to be there and were super political. There's even some first ladies whose husbands didn't want to be there. And it was the wife that pushed them there. And there are some that were very reluctant and did not want the job, did not want their husbands to be president and just weren't thrilled. Um, we've had a few widow presidents that were widowers. Um, so there are going to be some ladies that I feature that were not technically the first ladies, but they served as the first ladies. We had one bachelor president, James Buchanan, and he had his niece do all the duties of being a first lady. So that's kind of interesting. You'll see all different stances from them on how politically involved they were, how much, you know, some of them were, like I said, equals. Some of them just wanted to be in the background and do, you know, still be the wife and the mother. Many of these were mothers. Many of these women lost some, and there's quite a few that lost all of their children. Um, so they've just had sort of these interesting lives. A lot of the men, I found this interesting too. Many of the women came from privileged families, and I would say the majority of them did, but not all the presidents did. Many of the presidents started from absolutely nothing. Of course, we all know about Abraham Lincoln, but he's not the only one. Um, I I don't know. That's just, That was very interesting to me to see how many of these women um, were kind of from privileged backgrounds. They were from sort of established families and the men weren't always. Now, of course, they met as adults. So many times they met these men once the men had sort of made a little name for themselves. And of course, you would be in social circles with people that were probably more upper class. <laughs> so that could be a reason, too. Um there is a president. Well, a lot of that, it's hard to say whether they would be like considered a high school sweetheart because people did marry a lot younger then. But um, there's a couple that knew each other for a very long time from childhood. So, you know, not everything, but you're very, you're going to learn. I think you'll be surprised. Here's another thing that I thought was really interesting. Um, some of these women were very popular in their time and some were not. Some of them are popular now that were not popular when they were first ladies. A, a glaring example is Eleanor Roosevelt. I think I got, when I announced the first lady series, Eleanor Roosevelt might be the one that I got the most comments on. Please do Eleanor. Please do Eleanor. We love her. She's incredibly popular now. Not so popular when she was first lady, which I find interesting. Uh, Mary Todd Lincoln was kind of controversial then. I think in a way she may be more popular now. But still a little controversial. I think with a lot of people, the jury's out, whether they really like her and appreciate her as a person. Um, that's going to be an interesting one to go over. I think there's just a lot of things because, you know, in the United States, I know there's a lot of people that wanted to watch this outside of the United States that don't know a lot about American history. Let me tell you, even in the United States, we don't study it enough in schools. Um it's always kind of bothered me. I think the first good history teacher I had was in high school in my junior year. And it is the first year that we did a deep dive into American history. All through elementary school, it's very, it's very at a glance. We did a lot more studying of the states we lived in and the regional history than the history, the American history as a whole. Um, so that was kind of my junior year of high school was my first sort of peaked interest in this. And that year was the first year that we actually studied American history in depth. And I really enjoyed it. But the first ladies aren't really covered that much. So and there's still a lot to learn about them. So the way this is going to shake out is I'm going to do these videos. Um, as often as I can, there are times in my schedule where I don't have time to do my regular floss tube cross-stitching videos as well as do this, but I'm going to really try and keep them up. There's a lot of these ladies we have to cover. 
I'm going to do some lives as I can. And the first one I have scheduled is Friday, February 24th at eight o'clock. So I'm going to, I'm definitely going to have Martha video uploaded. I will try to possibly do Abigail. I can't promise that one. So this will be ongoing. They will be titled different than my regular floss tube videos. So it'll be, the first one will be First Ladies and Their needer, Needlework, Episode 1, Martha Washington, and so on and so forth. Some of these First Ladies, like I said, because we don't have, historians don't have a ton of information on them. Some of these First Ladies, and some of them, quite honestly, are not terribly interesting. <laughs> some are incredibly interesting, and some of them are, eh, okay. Um... Some of the episodes, like Martha and Abigail, they will have their own episode. There is so much to go over with, especially those two. Um, some of the first ladies will be, there might be more than one first lady in an episode. I'm still debating whether or not, I'm just thinking out loud here. I'm still debating whether or not to, in Abigail's episode, do her daughter-in-law as well um, in the same episode since I will be talking about Abigail or if I should just do them in order. So that'll be a surprise. We will see. There's so much to talk about with Abigail. She's one of the most interesting first ladies in my opinion. So I'm not sure how that'll shake out. That will be a last minute decision. So that's how it'll go. I will do these videos. You can watch them, watch them at your leisure. I would love, here's what I would love. And this is kind of why I wanted to do the introduction video. I love comments. Keep the comments nice. I don't care if you don't like it or disagree with me. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> but I love constructive criticism too. So if there's something that I've forgotten or gotten wrong, I welcome for you to nicely tell me that. In subsequent videos and on my live, if there's something that I didn't go over that you were interested in, I will do my best to see if I can find out answers for you. It may not totally be possible. Um, but I can address it on subsequent videos and even on the lives. So I want the human interact or the human. I hope you're all humans. The interaction with people that watch these and tell me, I want to know at the end of this, did you find a first lady you loved? Did it get you interested in either women's history? Did it get you interested in American history? Any particular lady stand out to you that you had never really known about? Because I know with me, there's quite a few that I have been like, I'm going to have to do a much deeper dive because there's something about certain ones that really call to me um, that you can relate to, you know. Uh, another, These are very imperfect people, okay? So there's things that you're going to love and hate about each one of them. And I just ask you to take it as as it is, okay? We're not perfect people. These are not perfect people. Um, and like I said, there's some I think you'll fall in love with and some you might be like, meh, I don't love her. But it'll be different for everybody. So that's kind of what I'm planning. So I want the comments. I want the feedback. I'm gonna try to keep these going. It could very well take a good year. I will show some of my resources, some of the books and things. I am hoping to... Um, sign up for an Amazon affiliate link. So I will link some of the books and things that I show you and reference. And then it'll all be on one Amazon page where if you're interested in purchasing or just want to remember the title of something, you can go in there and look and either request the book from your library or purchase a copy because I have a lot of them, a lot of books on particular first ladies and some on first ladies in general. So that's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of what I'm going to do. Like I said, this is sort of a cautionary tale. I am not a historian. This is not my full time job, although I missed my calling. It could have been, you know, whatever. I want it to be fun and interesting and not serious and it definitely not controversial. So that is, I don't want those kind of comments. And I'm just saying that straight out because whatever, that's not what this is about. This is about learning about interesting women. Um, it's not all women that watch my videos, so there's a few guys out there, but, you know, history is interesting. We're all people, and it's fun to learn about the people that went before us and where we're going and what we have in common, because there's a lot more in common, I think, than differences, and, you know, we actually haven't been walking the earth all too terribly long in the scheme of things, so... 
that's why I'm doing it. I, it's basically, I'm gonna geek out, and it was a great excuse to research something that I love and get a little bit more into. And I think rather than, I originally was gonna do this in a six week period, but I think it would have been too rushed. And that's why I sort of have been postponing and changing my mind on how this would play out because I wanna give each lady their due time and time for us to talk about it. I will also have some um, new releases and different things um, throughout this series. I'm hoping to have a couple of exclusives. There already is. I do have a linen uh, named after another first lady that I will release at some point during this series. And um, that's kind of how it's gonna go. So if you have comments, um, after each video, I would really love the comments. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that you subscribe to my floss tube and make sure you hit the notification bell. The notification bell at the top of the channel or whatever, it's going to give you a notice when I have a new video, whether it's a floss tube or a first ladies, as well as when I schedule the live, like the first one on the 24th, you will get a notification that I am going to have a live and then you will also get a notification that I am live in case you forget. And that's just for us to have interaction. The first one, I actually am gonna show some cross stitch patterns and things. There's a lot of them that feature Abigail and Martha. And we can chit chat and you guys can tell me a little bit about what you think and what you want me to go over um, in these videos. So that's that. This That's the introduction. It was a long one, 36 minutes. I thought this would be a 20 minute video, but you know me, I talk a lot. So, so I will see you on the first first ladies video, Martha Washington. And I think you're going to like her too. I think, uh, my hope is that you learn something new about each person and maybe get your interest peaked a little bit to dig a little deeper into somebody, something. So that's that. So pretty soon I will be uploading that. It'll be this week. Today is Monday the 13th. And look for Martha soon. She will have her own title. It's not my regular floss tube channel. So make sure you like and subscribe. We're going to have fun. It's going to be very casual, not too serious. If you're not into history, I'm just asking to give it a chance because I think you might enjoy it. And you know me, I like quirky stuff, and there's going to be some interesting quirky things in these videos. So I will see you later, and um, watch for Martha Washington. Bye.